So it's been a very interesting morning. I've learned a lot about different technologies. Uh, you can use your portable window. And uh, some of the you know, some of the terms I heard this morning about what innovation includes are solving problem, problems relevant to the mission, uh, being aware of circumstances, and hopefully through today's conversation and through today's discussion, we'll be able to look at what that context is and um, from there we can make informed as well as fearless decisions. So why are we looking at patents today? Where, what do patents have to do with space? You know, I know a lot of previous speakers and companies are already thinking about patents and they're also being very um, aware to remove information, which is great news from a patent agent standpoint. It means that they're listening to their counsel. Um, when we look at patents, it's one metric out of many metrics, but we can use that one metric to track where technology is occurring. We can track who is developing that technology, and we can also track when that technology it has been developed. And another good thing about patents is that um, when it gets issued, it's inherently an admission from the world or the certain patent office that says, hey, look at me. I'm a new invention, and I'm out there to, um, in, as a legal document to enforce my rights and potentially exclude other people from using that same technology. So with this patent application or with these issued patents, there's a lot of information that we can glean and gather from this data. So really quickly about Blake's is our law firm. We are a Canadian law firm and we provide service to clients across various different sectors. Um, one of the, the area that I work in is in intellectual property law. And we do have a local as well as an international presence. So moving forward, um, before I get into some of the data, I first want to explain some of the terminology or some of the lingo, or what I like to tell my clients patent needs. Um, so we have a patent application. A patent application is when someone files a patent application, it's a pending state. You can't actually sue someone with a patent application. But we, it's a good piece of data because when someone takes that time and money to file a patent application, they're betting that the technology that they've put into this patent application is an invention. A granted or issued patent is that same document, that patent application, which has received that gold seal from a patent office saying, yes, we verify by definition your technology is new and inventive. Um, USPTO stands for U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. The reason why I mentioned that is um, for those who might not have a patent background, patents operate on a per country basis. So that means if I file a U.S. patent and I get that U.S. patent, I can't use that U.S. patent to sue someone in Canada or Australia. Those rights are just local to the U.S. Um, similarly, if I had an Australian patent, I couldn't use some, that Australian patent to enforce my rights in China and so on. Um, the Europe, EPO stands for the European Patent Office. Um, and an EPO patent by itself is actually not enforceable. How it works is when you file a European patent application, eventually it'll be issued to patent. But then you're going to need to get it rubber stamped, just like a passport, in certain countries, such as Great Britain, France, Germany, or any other European countries of your choice. And it's a streamlined way to get patent protection in those individual countries. A PCT application is also commonly referred to as an international application. And we'll get into details about um, a PCT application. But it is important because, um, or I guess I'll first explain the mechanics, which are when you file a PCT application, you don't actually get an international patent. There's no such thing as an international patent. But it acts as a two and a half year or 30 month placeholder, which afterwards allows an applicant to file in certain countries like the US, France, or Japan, or any other country for that matter. 
So having that background, um, let's look at the first set of data. And I apologize, it's going to be a bit of a, an eye exam, but I will explain all of this. Um, so don't worry too much about the text. Um, over here, we see four lines. Uh, so for this dotted line over here, these are US granted patents. As I mentioned before, um, patents are actually inventions that have been deemed by the US Patent Office to in fact be new and inventive. And these are all related to space, by the way. So we see an, an incline or huge increase um, over the 90s and then at about um, the early 2000s, we see a, a drop in the granting of US patents. Um, over here we have our US patent applications. Again, applications are um, still pending, so they're not issued patents yet, so they're in the pipeline. Uh, again, we see a drop in uh, starting around mid-2000. And looking at PCT applications, as well as European applications, which are on the bottom, um, they have increased and have continued to remain steady. So what we can glean from this data is that for the US, uh, sorry, for PCT in Europe, um, a lot of these, a lot of countries which use these patent tools in Europe and PCT, um, there continues to be strong innovation um, and very steady innovation. For the US, they have their own trend, and we'll see this in further data. But as to the drop, I'm, you know, it's something I cannot really explain other than. Um, to mention certain possibilities, which are either US companies are using the US patent system less often, or it could mean that innovation in the US is starting to cool down, which from today's talks doesn't seem to be the case. So over here, we have more of the what. Um, what is being developed over the last years? Um, so on the left-hand side, um, you're looking at data from the years 2000 to 2005. Um, and the majority, by, based on percentage points, um, of the innovation or patent applications are being filed in general satellite technology. And I'm going to move that on to 2006, 2011. Um, so we see a general increase. Um, for that second set of bars, we're looking at satellite navigation technology. Um, again, between 2000 and 2005, um, there's also a very strong component um, in the 2006 to 2011. However, I'd like to point out that there's a, actually a, quite a large spike um, in US filings um, within GPS or, or satellite navigation. Um, so again, a really strong component of innovation as shown by PAN applications is in satellite technology. And I will zoom in later on about cosmonautics. Cosmonautics is an overall umbrella of space technology related to um, technology outside of Earth's atmosphere. We'll get into those in further detail. Sorry, if, and I'll, I'll just go back. Um, now, when, I, when looking at this data, I think one thing that we can take away is that if you're a satellite developer or satellite provi provider, um, you know, watch out, you're entering, you're, you are in a crowded minefield. There's a lot of patents out there, or patent applications out there, which will eventually become patents. So um, know who your competitors are and uh, keep an eye out for what they are developing in. So this is specific to the PCT. And as I mentioned earlier, PCTs are like international patent applications, but they'll never become issued patents. They're actually quite expensive to file, um, but they act as temporary placeholders. And the reason why people file PCT applications or company files, companies file for PCT applications is because they're trying to be aggressive to potentially obtain global protection. So when a company invests in a PCT application, 
that to me is a symbol that says, watch out. Um, sure, they might be based locally and might have a strong presence locally in their country, but they're looking to potentially block their other competitors from other countries or even develop their own market in other countries. So what this graph tells us is uh, the percentage of applicants and where they are from. Um, over here, we're looking at Europe. Um, and by the way, the, the red line represents the 2009 to 2011 data, which is more recent. And then this yellow line, these yellow bars, represent um, what it was historically based on percentage points. So Europe has a strong uh, or has quite a significant increase in their PCT application filings. Um, United States, by comparison, used to be a very strong user or a big user of the PCT system, but they've dropped significantly. Um, I, I think what this, at least what we can look into this from a PAN perspective, is that um, European countries, at least are, are companies out of Europe, are looking to gain more of an international and aggressive stance when it comes to their patent portfolios. So if you're a US-based company, um, you know, watch out. Um, although you might not see them from a business perspective, uh, their IP uh, will, you know, will be there. Um, significant, another um, data point that I would like to point out is France. Uh, France is another a major player of the PCT system and I think that what this again means is um, from a development standpoint or uh, innovation standpoint competitors are developing technology or if you're looking from the perspective of you know where do I find talents or where do I find collaborators um, France would be another good one Okay, I want to now take this time to zoom in on cosmonautic patent applications. So how the patent system works, or the international patent system works, is that there are international patent classifications. So every field of technology out there, whether it's your car or your you know, water sprinkler or um, a pharmaceutical um, drug, all of these technologies are being classified. And these classifications are used to tag technologies or end patent applications, both on a national as well as an international level. And it's very useful for tracking data because it allows us to see, you know, within this field of technology, who's developing what. It becomes a very quick way to do searches and get a feel of the landscape. So within one of the classifications that we're looking at is the cosmonautic classification which includes all transport outside of Earth's atmosphere, and this includes artificial Earth satellites and interplanetary, interplanetary as well as interstellar travel. So looking within these cosmonautic patent applications, we've taken the aggregate of patent applications filed all around the world. Um, US, Japan, PCT, Europe, Australia, and so on. Um, and we've put them on this graph on a year-by-year -year basis. So again, cumulatively, um, you're looking at um, an overall a decline since um, 2003, but then um, again, around the 2007, 2008 point, there's been a steady rise again. So which goes to show that innovation is occurring and people are investing in the protection of their space technology. So using this data, we're able to slice and dice it in several ways to give us a few interesting trends. And before I get into those additional graphs and so on, I just want to pause here um, to identify some of the pan language. So there's a term called claiming convention or claiming priority under the Paris Convention. And what that means is that if I file an application in one country, a year later I can file further applications. So for example, if I file a US application, a year later I can then file in France, Canada, and China, and those further applications are going to claim the benefit of priority back to that US application. So it means like they almost have the same filing date in effect. Um, 
Now, what this US application is, what we call it is our first priority application. And the reason why that's important, identifying the first priority application, is because it tells us the origin of that technology. Typically, not in all cases, but a lot of the time, um, companies will first file their patent applications in the country in which they're based in. Um, now, that's not necessarily the case for Canada, which is a lot smaller economy, um, but for a lot of other countries, um, companies such as U.S. companies will first file a U.S. application. Um, as another example, uh, you know, a company based in France, for example, will file a French application, then later file a PCT application, which buys them, again, time internationally to file other applications, such as U.S., Canada, and China. But looking at U.S., the Canadian, and the Chinese application, their first priority application goes back to the French application. So having that nomenclature in mind, um, what we can look at are where are these applications coming from? Where are these cosmonautic applications coming from? Um, looking at the, on the left-hand side, for the country of first priority, we're looking at the US, France, and Russia, and Japan. Um, so, what, again, what this means is these are really hotbeds of innovation for technology. There are companies and governments in these countries that are developing technology and they're taking a stance on their protection. The application filing country um, means that it's not necessarily where they're um, coming from, but this is where they're going. This is where they, these inventions end up being protected in. Again, we have a similar profile, US, Russia, Japan. Um, interestingly though, if you look at France, um, the origin country, originating country, which is a first priority country, was, is 13%, but then it now drops to 3%. So what that means is that um, you know, a lot of companies, international companies, are not filing or getting protection in France, but a lot of French companies are originating their technology and filing um, on a more international scale. Again, I think it, this points out to, you know, if you're looking to see where your competitors are, look towards France, they might be there, or if you're looking for Italians or collaboration, um, you'll find it in France. Now, now I want to spend this time looking at the what. Um, within cosmonautic applications, what sort of technologies are being Developed. Where are people investing their money to get protection? Um, so these are the subclasses. We have cosmonautic vehicles. We have um, observing and tracking cosmonautic vehicles. We have tools. We have ground equipment, spacesuits, simulations, and a generic other category. So the majority of the development is actually occurring within the vehicle section. Again, this is within the realm or class for cosmonautics. Um, and then there's a quite an even spread between um, observing, ground equipment, and simulation. And if we break down the vehicle subclass um, furthermore, uh, you'll see that you have general cosmonautic vehicles, um, which is a major component. Um, We'll also have the coupling or separating, and one of the things that really um, stands out to me is the parts of the cosmonautic vehicles, about 14% over here. And the reason why I want to take this time to just highlight parts is that, um, you know, when it comes to vehicles, you know, think of a door handle, whether it's for a car, you know, a four-door sedan or a truck, if you just patent just that door handle, you'll get a lot broader protection compared to trying to patent the entire vehicle. So it's a very strategic way to patent that certain element of that vehicle um, so that as that component is used on other vehicles, you're able to get licensing off of that technology. Just a very strategic way to protect that com component. Um, so, um, I'm going to now look into Canadian and U.S. patents. Um, now, 
you know, just for the, the Canadians in our crowd, you know, we were talking about thousands of applications or, com or even hundreds and um, thousands overall and hundreds from the U.S. Um, if you look at the numbers in Canada, you're looking at anywhere between 6 to 18. So really, um, you know, what does this say about Canada? Hopefully that we have a lot more work to do. Um, again, in terms of these Canadian patent applications, they're coming mostly from U.S. and France. And uh, here's some of the top assignees between 2003 and 2012. And for more, re um, so Airbus, MDAs over here, for a more um, recent, or now for the U.S., uh, again, we see a decline in the U.S., so that's expected. Uh, in the interest of time, I just want to look at um, who are the major players in terms of company. We've talked about countries, but let's look at the specific people or the specific companies. Uh, within Asia, we're looking um, at a company at Korea. They're one of the major innovators. Uh, Mitsubishi is, is also up here. Um, and interestingly, um, as you'll see, you'll have more brand companies like Sharp and um, as we go to North America, for example, you'll even see companies like Qualcomm. So within Europe, you're looking at Airbus, Energia, uh, Cosmic Science Production, um, Bales, a lot of the major players which you're probably aware of already. And within North America, you have Boeing, Lockheed, um, Honeywell, and as I mentioned, you know, even Qualcomm is on the board. So, you know, looking at this data, it's a lot of numbers, um, but from a patent perspective, it allows us to look at where the what and the who of the innovation that's occurring around us. Uh, from the data, we can see that innovation in space continues to um, occur, continues to grow. Um, now, if you're a developer, and I would say, you know, we typically do these sort of landscape searches to say, where are your competitors? Who are your neighbors? And as you're developing, where should you watch out for? And what technologies should you watch out for? And then when protecting your own technology, I'd say consider the type of technology that you're protecting. And a lot of times what you're protecting compared to where you're protecting, um, there is some correlation. OK, so thank you so much. And if you have any questions, um, I'll be around after the talk as well. Any questions for Wolfram? How do you have a, a, a system set up to be able to generate this type of data very quickly? Um, we do. Um, there's, I mean, this data comes out of a, um, a patent tool from Thompson Labs. So there's a lot of legal research. By even a graphical representation or a map of where patents are coming out of. Anybody else? If you're, if you're searching for something to find out what's already out there, and let's say I call it a door handle, but somebody else calls it an apple, how do you make sure you're protected or, or, or you find what you're looking for to see if it's there? So that's where classification codes come in quite handy. Yeah. Right. Actually, we don't, we don't actually do the tagging. Um, the patent office does the tagging, okay. and they'll actually tag it under multiple classes. And actually, one of the classes that exists out there, I'm happy to say, is actually extraterrestrial mining, believe it or not. So the patent offices do keep up to date with technology, and they'll create new classes as these new realms of technology exist. Okay, thank you. Okay, well,